Okay, our first question today involves a balloon, and the balloon is pulling a instrument package up into the atmosphere so that it can make some recordings. Um, this question is number 38, and what we want the what the question says is that, uh, the instrument attached to a weather balloon have a mass of five kilograms. The balloon is released and exerts an upward force of ninety eight newtons on the instruments. What is the acceleration of the balloon and the instruments? So first of all, let's write down what we're looking for. What is the acceleration? And <coughs> let's write down what we're given. We're given that the mass is equal to five kilograms. <coughs> and there is an upward force of 98. So for that one, we'll say the force of the balloon is equal to 98. <coughs> so uh, in order to do this, we need to draw the free body diagram of the package here, which I've done. What's touching it plus gravity? The, the rope or string is touching it, atta touching it, so that's pulling up. That's the balloon force. And well, we, I could have named that uh, tension force, but it doesn't matter. And gravity is pulling down. So if I go summation of the forces is equal to F net. We have F, now what's positive here? Up is positive. We have FB minus FG equaling MA. And I can now substitute uh, MG for, F, for force of gravity. And then I'll divide by M both sides. So I'll get FB divided by M minus MG divided by M equals A. And the M's cancel out there. And now I can plug in my numbers. This is 98 divided by 5 kilograms minus 9.8. And this is going to give me 9.8 meters per second squared. And that's my acceleration. So the next problem says, uh, after the balloon has accelerated for 10 seconds, the instruments are released. What is the velocity of the instruments at the moment of their release? Uh, so to solve this problem, we're we know that in this case, this is part B, we know that the initial velocity is zero. Okay, We know the acceleration is equal to positive 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, just to let you know, that means that this package is accelerating up. So this, this means up at 9.8. Why? Because it's a positive value. Okay? Uh, we're looking for the final velocity. And in fact, we're looking for that after time equals 10 seconds. So after 10 seconds, what's the final velocity? Now, if you look at these variables that we have, this is a kinematics problem, and we're going to use this equation. So we can now calculate the final velocity by going 9.8 times 10 plus 0, and that's going to give us 98 meters per second, and that's the final velocity. That means 
if the balloon starts here and it goes up and at this point if the rope is cut and it's and it's released so that all we have is just the package at this point our initial velocity is zero and at this final point after 10 seconds the final velocity is 98 meters per second okay um, so that's that's part B next comes part C and that says what knit force acts on the instruments after their release so after release if we draw the package what's touching it nothing plus gravity therefore the only force now remember this is positive so the only force acting on it is the force of gravity so we would say negative FG equals F net and of course this is this is from summation of the forces is equal to F net right so I would say negative FG equals MA and in this case negative MG equals MA, the M's cancel, and you get negative 9.8 equals the acceleration. Okay? It didn't really ask for the acceleration, but it essentially what, what now, after the balloon releases the package, now the acceleration of the package is under only gravity. Then the next next the last part section D says when does the direction of the velocity first become downwards when as in time equals when does the velocity equal a negative value now really what it's asking here is after it lets it go so if we kind of draw this, here are the stages of what we have. Here, my init the initial velocity is zero. Then it goes up for 10 seconds. It's accelerating up. And at that point, the balloon is cut. And the package is now going up. And its velocity here I don't know if I can say final, but its velocity here is equal to 98. Then uh, it goes up for some more time, and that's really what we want to calculate here. And at this point, the velocity will be zero because that will be the maximum height. At that point, when the velocity is zero, it's going to change direction and start coming back down again. So the question is, what is this? Now understand that the acceleration in this part here is equal to positive 9.8. Understand that the acceleration here is only due to gravity, so it's negative 9.8. Remember, this was calculated in the first part and and this here was from the last section the last part now question is what is this time that's what we want to find and really you can see the symmetry in this problem we're going from 0 to 98 and then 98 to 0 how long do you think that's going to take well if I guess just from symmetry, it's gonna t it should take 10 seconds because the acceleration here in the first section is positive 9.8, and then in the second section it's negative 9.8, but we can verify this with the equation. 
if we use this equation and say, hey, what's, let's solve for time, I can easily solve for time here like that and I have my final velocity which is this 0 minus my initial velocity which is 98 divided by the acceleration in this case which is negative 9.8 you can see that 9 negative 98 divided by 9.8 negative is going to give me 10 seconds so my my analysis uh, earlier was correct this is 10 seconds now we finished the problem but really what I'd like to do now is I'd like to see if you can graph this so let's start by doing the motion graphs for this and the easiest way place to start here is the acceleration graph so let's move this all up and we know that and I want to start here at the bottom I'm moving a lot of, I'm creating a lot of space here but my acceleration graph here is going to be positive 9.8 for the first 10 seconds and then for the next 10 seconds it's going to be negative 9.8 okay from here can you now you should pause the video and see if you can draw the velocity time graphs and the position time graphs knowing that the initial velocity where this thing starts out the initial velocity is zero and I will also say that the initial position is also zero. Okay? Go ahead and see if you can uh, draw the VT and the DT graph and pause the video now. Okay, so the velocity time graph, let's do it here, like this. Um, for this one, we know that the initial velocity is going to be zero. Okay, as you can see right here. And then the acceleration for the first 10 seconds is positive 9.8, right? The acceleration is positive 9.8. That means it's going to have a positive slope here. Okay. Then for the next 10 seconds, there's a negative slope. Okay. Now at the peak here, What's the what's the the velocity at 10 seconds? It's 98. Also, if you look at this, what's this area? 10 times 9.8. That's 98. Now, the vt sorry the dt graph. Let's go like this. This one's probably the most tricky one. We also know that it starts, we, we know that it starts at a zero position. So it starts here. But see, this first part means that the velocity is increasing and the velocity starts from zero. So if you think about curves, you could, you know, you could have a curve like this or you could have a curve like this. This one's wrong because the slope here is big. This one's correct because the slope here is small, almost zero. So if we draw a dotted line here, we're going to go like this. Oops, let me start that again. That's looking kind of straight here. There. 
Now for the next 10 seconds, the acceleration flips. Um, mathematically, actually, this is called an inflection point. But now the acceleration is now negative 9.8, and the velocity goes down to zero. Please understand, if the velocity goes to zero after another 10 seconds, it doesn't mean the position is zero. No. The, the position of the object continues to move at this point. It continues to move away from the origin here. Okay, it doesn't go back down to the origin. This first part is 10 seconds, then the next part is 10 seconds. It's always moving away from the origin, except in the first 10 seconds, it's accelerating away. In the second 10 seconds, it's the acceleration direction is flipped and it's slowing down to a velocity of zero. So the next part actually looks like this. And you can see at this point, the slope here is zero. The slope at this point here is the value here, which is 98. So the slope there is 98. But it accelerates away, and then it flips acceleration direction, and it slows back down to zero at another after another 10 seconds. And so there, there's all three graphs for you, although I can't fit them all in at the same time, but I'll scroll down. Okay. The other thing to note in this uh, scenario is that if you want to know the final position, that can easily be found by calculating the area here and adding it the area there, which is essentially two triangles and since that would give us our delta D and since our initial position was zero the delta D will equal your final position so if we wanted to calculate the final position to calculate this area the area of the triangle would be base times height divided by two right so let's say this first triangle here that's ten times 98 divided by 2, base times height divided by, but then there's two of them, right? So it's multiplied by 2. So the 2's cancel, and we're left with 980. So the area of that would be 980. Therefore, that means that the after 20 seconds, that final position would be 980 meters. Okay. Now you can actually uh, figure this out by using another equation saying this let's say you can try using this one. Okay. And for the so you can add them up for the first part acceleration is one half a is um, negative 9.8 times 10 squared and the initial velocity was zero okay so this disappears and um, this is a hundred and this is one half of 9.8 is 4.9 Okay, so my mistake here, the first part, the acceleration was positive 9.8, not negative. There you go. I knew I made a mistake. Okay, so that's equal to uh, 490, right? 4.9 times 100. That's the first, that's the first part. Okay, so that, that means this is 490. Then the second part, how, how far does that go? So we can do that over here. Let's do the second part now. Delta D, same equation. But in this case now, my VI is no longer zero. My VI is 98. And in fact, you can see it here too, right there. 
So if I calculate this one, but now my acceleration is negative. So negative 9.8, again, times 10 seconds squared, plus 98 times t, which is 10 seconds. And this is going to give me, so to calculate this, this first part is negative 490 plus 980. So it gives me a total of positive 490. So that means my second delta D for the second part, it means this section is another 490, which makes sense now because that means the total final position is 2 times 490, which is 980. And it all works out. But I, I got this answer in two different ways. One way, calculating the area under the VT graph. And the other way, I did it by calculating the delta D for the first 10 seconds and then for the next 10 seconds. And I got the same thing. OK? So that's the end of this problem. Okay, so the next question is a boy and a girl pulling each other, a uh, tug of war on an icy surface. And uh, let's represent the boy with a box. Here's the boy. And it's 65 kilos. And here's the girl. And, oops, actually, let me put the name outside the box. And this one's 45 kilos. The girl is lighter. And they're connected with a rope. And we're given that when they're pulling each other, the acceleration of the girl is equal to 3 meters per second. And of course, in this situation, we're going to say the girl is uh, accelerating to the left. So we'll say that's a positive direction for the girl. Um, we'll also say that for the boy, it, when the boy accelerates, we'll say that his positive direction is to the right. Now, can I do this? Sure. There's no reason why I can't. They're separate free body diagrams. And I'm just going to choose a positive direction so that my the math works out positive for, for each person. However. There is now a magic sentence that I'm going to write, and I'm going to write it in red. And this magic sentence, and I'll even put it down here. Remember, we already have two magic sentences. The first magic sentence states that uh, what's touching it plus gravity in order to draw free body diagrams. And the second magic sentence states that cables ropes, uh, strings, and chains can only pull. They cannot push. And the third magic sentence states that one rope can only have one tension. Okay. So uh, this is magic sentence number three. By the way, in case you missed it, magic sentence uh, number two was, I'll write it down even though I just said it, ropes can only pull. They cannot push. Okay? And number, and number one was for free body diagrams. What's touching it plus gravity? Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a free body analysis on the girl here. So I have a tension force pulling her to the left there in the positive direction. So if I write down the math now, I can say summation of the forces is equal to F net. And I can say, OK, there's only one force, and that's the tension force pulling her. Um, I'm not going to use gravity in this case. 
because I'll tell you why she is on sitting on ice and if I was to draw the gravity in I would have gravity force going down but I also have a normal force going up from the ice and this force is going to cancel this force so they're negated by each other the only force that's going to cause this thing to accelerate is the tension force that's in red to the left now that means that that's going to equal ma that means since i have the mass of the girl 45 and i also have her acceleration that's three now i know that the tension force in the rope must be 135 newtons okay now knowing this and knowing my magic sentence one rope can only have one tension that means that there must be another force in this direction that is equal and opposite in other words the rope is pulling on both things equally now if you if you ever have the question how can how can you win a tug of war if the tension in the rope is equal to both sides that's a bit of a a it's like a trick question because it's not the tension in the rope that is different for the two people in the tug of war it's the force on the ground between the two people so the person who is able to manifest a larger force on the ground is the person who wins but the tension in the rope is the same for both people so Getting back to the problem here, if we now do a free body analysis of this side, we have, uh, for this one, let's just change colors again, back to black, and we go summation of the forces is equal to F net, and we have, uh, now in this case, my positive direction is the same, so it's the same, so FT equals MA, but in this case, I know what FT is. So in order to solve for the A of the boy, I would just say FT divided by M equals A. And I know that the FT is going to be the same as the one previously. So that's a 135. So it's 135 divided by the mass of the boy. That's a 5, which is 65. And now the acceleration here is going to be 2.07, I think, or something like that. And um, now we have the acceleration of the boy. So the acceleration for the two people are different because they're different masses. Okay, our last question for today is going to be question 40. And with that one, we have a pitcher throwing a ball. in this direction and we'll say this is the positive direction and the initial the velocity of the ball is 30 meters per second and um, that's pretty fast um, and and the ball ends up coming to rest in the mitt I don't know if I can draw this properly that's a that's a catcher's mitt it comes to rest in the catcher's mitt so the question is if this if it takes the time of 0 0.005 seconds to stop the ball and if the mass of the ball is 0 0.145 kilograms then what is the acceleration of the ball question mark so this is a pretty straightforward kinematics problem okay and essentially uh, we've got here's the equation V final equals AT plus VI Okay. 
So to calculate A, all I got to do is go V final minus V initial divided by T, which is like the definition of acceleration. So now, my final velocity is 0 minus my initial velocity, which was 30, div uh, divided by the time, which was 0 0.005. And I end up with an answer of negative 6,000 meters per second squared. Now, understand that the reason why it's such a humongous acceleration is because, oops, because the time is so small, 0 0.005. Now, the next, the next question uh, asks, what is the force on the ball and what is the force on the glove? Now, before I proceed with this problem, I want to give you guys an extremely important graphic. So here is kinematics, and let's call this the world of kinematics, and let's call this the world of dynamics. What are inside of these worlds? Well, in this one, we have our kinematics equations, right? These are for acceleration. V final e squared equals V initial squared plus 2A delta D. V final equals AT plus VI. And finally, delta D equals 1 half AT squared plus VIT. And over here in dynamics, we have summation of the forces is equal to F net, which is equal to MA. And that's it. And of course, we have to be able to draw free body diagrams. So what relates these two worlds to each other? Because they're kind of separate from each other. But there is one thing. There is a secret bridge that can take you from kinematics to dynamics and back again. And that secret bridge is acceleration. So notice, acceleration is the only thing in common with both sides within the two worlds. This one deals with forces. This one deals with motion. OK? And acceleration is what relates them specifically through the second law of classical mechanics. So if we now did the analysis Let's say, let's take the ball, for example. Now, if you remember, which way did I say was positive? I said to the right was positive. What, what direction is the force that stops the ball? Well, the force on the ball is to the left. That's the force that stops it, FB. Now, I, can, I don't need to worry about gravity in this case because it's in the catcher's mitt, and I'm not, I don't have a two-dimensional analysis here. Uh, this force is going to be much, much greater than gravity, and I can negate gravity in this situation because I'm not worried about the ball traveling up and down, only horizontally. So I can say, all right, that's the only force. And by the way, this is my positive direction. Summation of the forces is equal to F net. There's only one force, negative FB. And that's equal to MA. Now, what is that force? I know the mass of the ball, 145. And I know the acceleration of the ball, negative 6,000. So I can calculate FB to be 870 Newtons. So notice my negatives cancel each other out, too. So that force is to the left, and it is 870 newtons. Now, what's the force on the mitt or on the glove? It's the same force, but in the opposite direction. So if I draw the glove really poorly here, then the force on the glove is also equal to 870 newtons. But this is now to the right, not to the left. And that's the end of this problem as well.